uh, Hi Greg Ferry here, uh, Historic Preservationists on site. We're going to just do a quick tour of the carriage house in Clifton and the actual house in Clifton. Clifton. So, uh, so we must remember back in the 18th century, during the Revolutionary War, uh, the British were held up in here for several days and Washington uh, with uh, lead shot and cannonballs pounded this place and tried to get to the British and were very unsuccessful because they were flanked in the back and, and taken. Um, but this sign is kind of funny, we're just talking, it's kind of reminiscent. It's slouched over, it's bent, it looks in disarray, and a lot of the house here in Cleveland is in disarray. Um, anywhere from the pointing on the outside, Portland cement probably done in the 20s and 30s, is causing a lot of issues, oncoming issues we see on the inside of this wonderful dwelling. Um, and the depository in the back uh, is just overrun with humidity and, and paints, paints cracking, woods falling down, the ceilings are falling in. So again, uh, difficult historic times here, and, uh, just off of Germantown. So our great great pair, we're here in Clifton, um, looking at some Scala Andre fabric on a camelback sofa. This is very similar to the one that's in the Metropolitan, with these double humps in the back. Nice roll, conical edges, um, descending down toward the front, and uh, at once would have been great brass tacked all the way around. And you can tell these are stuffed with downy covers. But look at the gadrooning here. We have a lot of things going on. We have the gadrooning across the front, um, high style Philadelphia 1770s, and we have a pierced fretwork, a blind fretwork carved into the, into the rail. Uh, upholstering over the rail. You can see this was done in the early 70s. Already silk is starting to deteriorate, terminating in a club foot with a molded edge and a stretcher system underneath. So uh, just an absolutely phenomenal uh, Sofa here in Clifton, that's the dining room. Okay, we're upstairs at Clifton coming into one of the bedrooms. Let's take a look at this magnificent mahogany chest on chest. Uh, phenomenal period piece. Look at the color of the mahogany. Cuban mahogany, um, blind fretwork, pierced uh, between the, uh, the swan's neck. Just, just an absolute masterpiece. We'll take note of all the bedrooms up in Clifton on the top floor all have fireplaces, obviously, the bed chambers. Only the wealthy would have had that. Um, this is a more of a peasant bed, but we, we look over here, we have a tester bed. Um, probably late, it's you know, probably 1801, 1810. Um, you have a small uh, bathing apparatus, a, a tub, so to speak, or for a child. Uh, it would be next to the fireplace. The, 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 slaves, the slaves could be heating water in the, in the fireplace and pouring the water into the tub to keep the child warm. Wing chairs, high backs to keep the heat before bedtime, getting in the bed. The bed warmer to keep everything is about warm. Chamber pot under the bed, we can't forget that. Everybody used it. Usually you had one. You didn't have your own chamber pot. You just whipped it out and covered it up. Uh, we have a phenomenal oxbow chest here. And uh, just gorgeous, gorgeous Cuban mahogany. Just, just feel the patentization on this. And, and the, the feet these custom cast hardware, but they're very tarnished right now. And look at the look at the top. This is a one-piece Cuban top and this beautiful knot and, and crotch emulating out of it. Just gorgeous. But I must say this place is not in good order. They're not maintaining it well here at Clifton. I, I don't know what their financial status is or who's directing this affair. This type of, uh, this is showing us moisture coming through. And what they've done with the whole outside of this dwelling is that they've, uh, they've used pointing with cement, Portland cement. So again, as everyone out there knows, it's locking in all the moisture in the quartz stones, and it's coming back in the rooms and flicking the plaster off, flicking the paint off. We have a lot of deterioration down here. So we're seeing this in every room. Uh, just take, take note, uh, you have about a 12 inch high crown molding in all the rooms here. And, uh, you actually have raised paneling inside most of the doorways. Let's take a look over here. Look at, look at the entablature. This, the whole walls have raised paneling, so it's very, very nice. And look at the gargantuan side. Actually brought the Nagian size windows here. These are huge. These are eight feet of window. Um, but you know, they had the money. They had the money for the glass, the lights. Um, so they spent it here. So just a lovely room. and. Uh, and, and again, the tester beds. Let's find our way to another bedroom. Yeah.
after looking at the separate federal secretary. Do you think that's and, uh, you know what, that's probably the height, probably about the 1770s here. So just take a look at the massive so, 46 inch wide desk, um, beautiful crotch mahogany lid here. Look at this custom hardware. Look, look at the size of the suspension and these back plates. Absolutely phenomenal. Probably British though. They were done in Britain custom and brought here. Uh, individual glass windows. Edgar Allan Poe carved a bust in the top, uh, denticulated Grecian stock molding. Um, so absolutely a phenomenal piece. And unfortunately, we, we, I, I assume we're semi-blacked out, but maybe we're not. We just have too much light coming on this piece. Yeah, so we're getting a, a heck of a fading to right now. But uh, so uh, we, we're gonna turn this to the grand reception room. We can take a look at the, the molding around the top and just scan around the top, just exquisite over the doorways, the columns. So you know you're coming somewhere when you walked here. Um, so this would, would have been a separate building to Cleveland. They would have had a colonnade and the, the food preparation would have been done here. We have a lot of archaeological digs now and seeing what's happened. Just take a look at the wear on the threshold here coming in over the years. That's a lot of wear through a granite threshold. But just look how it's not being maintained. All of this, this paint's coming off from just excessive moisture and it continues here. So. Um, and we can look from probably the 1920s and 30s, they used this wire to put, quote, plastering, but they didn't just use plastering. They used two, two and a half inches of, of cement, unfortunately, cement over the wire. And again, it's, it's encapsulating all the moisture and it's causing all kinds of issues. And you can see where some of the archaeologists are making small pock marks around. Uh, here's some of their tools. Uh, I understand they're volunteers. We're going to go to the other room and take a look at the fireplace where they're actually doing some more of the work. Um, and we can look up here, we can see where the, the ceiling's coming down from a, a previous leak. And, uh, and this is the addition, uh, not an addition, but this was, the, again, the kitchen. So uh, again, roof not well maintained, and et cetera, et cetera. And you can see various types of, uh, uh, various types of ceilings put up as one was falling. There's three I'm looking at right here. So instead of repairing it properly the first time, they just kept propping it up and screws here, screws there, wire, mesh, more plaster. Uh, but just take a look at what's happening with this excessive moisture here in Terrible. And the moisture, the moisture continues in here also. That's what the interpretation looked like. Oh, okay, got it. So it's the same thing. Again, we're, we're, we're doing some uh, this archaeological stucco and looking at the stone pointing, which unfortunately they used. Uh, they use Portland cement instead of the lime mortar. And, and here we're uh, taking a look at the, the wall, which has been filled in, which would have been a great hard fireplace here. And uh, so anyway, so the archaeologists are doing their thing.